open your mind to something new. The Damned Podcast. Let go of what anchors you and cut loose into the deep with your host, Daniel Updike. Hello, folks. You are tuned into the Damned Podcast. I hope you like the new logo that we have out there now. It's a little simpler and a little cleaner. And uh, of course, this is our interview discussion section. And I am very honored today to have someone you might have heard of, a, a very prolific author, really, uh, Bal Kaderman. And I, I really like what he is writing about and what he is doing and I reached out to him on Instagram of all platforms a while ago and said you know hey do you do you want to have a discussion or an interview with me and uh, and uh, I was kind of wondering you know well, hmm, well maybe he's never heard of my broadcast and will wonder what I'm up to but you know he answered me and 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 really wanted to do it and I'm just so glad that you took the time uh, to be here with us Bob. No, thank you. Thank you for having me on your show. And uh, just for your viewers, uh, literally the day before you contacted me, I was watching one of your uh, podcasts and I was like, wow, it would be great to be on this podcast. And here you go. A day later, you asked me on the podcast. That was, that was amazing. I love how that works. <laughs> Synchronicity. Yes, exactly. Uh, nothing's really an accident, is it? Exactly. I agree with you 100%. Now, of course, I know we've got viewers that are from all over the place, and uh, I know that there's some folks that will have heard of you, but I know there's going to be people that haven't. And I was wondering, Val, if you would mind taking just a few moments as we start out here to, to introduce yourself in your own words uh, to our viewers. Sure. I'd be honored. Um, well, I mean, the basics, um, born and bred in New York City. <laughs> uh, it's been my home for, uh, obviously, and I still live here. Uh, I've lived in the Middle East for many years, and uh, both sides of my family, my mother's side and my father's side, uh, have um, occult uh, experiences, and some are practitioners, some are, are just, I guess you could say, dabblers. And so I grew up in a situation where it was um, it wasn't unusual to have occult experiences, but as a child or uh, when I was young, I didn't appreciate it. It was really didn't mean anything to me. Uh, but little did I know that later it would be. So I have about thirty years, uh, a little over thirty years of experience in the occult and history and and studying these concepts. And originally, I was going to be in medicine <laughs> before I became an author in the occult and religion and history. I was going to be in medicine uh, for uh, actually head of a lab in uh, infectious disease. Uh, I didn't end up there, which is actually I'm thankful for that. Uh, so I have a, a pretty diverse background, and it allows me, I feel, to write what I write and to bring all these ideas together in a way that uh, makes sense. Mm. And so that's really my background, uh, like I said, over 30 years of studying this. I mean, I can get more in detail, but you know, if, if you want more detail, I could. <laughs> well, you know what, folks? Uh, I think that that's, that's enough to actually get you inspired to, to read some of the material that's out there uh, that uh, Bal Kadman has put out. And uh, I, I've been watching the titles that he's been putting out for a while now, actually, and I've been look, oh, look at that. Look at that. Who's been writing about that? Nobody else that I can find, and uh, been been quite excited about those things because uh, you know, as as we were having a discussion just before we started recording this for our broadcast, for our interview broadcast, uh, you know, we sort of moved into you know how it seems so much that is out there today is a regurgitation of what other people have done, 
but not too many people looking at the actual source materials, asking the questions, the right questions really about why things were done that way. And uh, I know that's a passion of uh, Ball's heart to make sure that that goes out to people. And, uh, you know, when we were talking about that before going on the air, that really resonated with me very strongly. And, uh, you know, it sort of ties into this question that I, I'm asking now, which is, you know, what would you say is the most important factor that is in your life or has been in your life or all of the above that has brought you to the focus you have now? And of course, the passion you have to write about these things. Oh my God. Do you have about, what, two or three hours to do this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'll, I'll get it. I'll, I'll make it succinct. Um, you know, I was shipped off uh, in my seventh and eighth grade year, which was many moons ago, to the Middle East because I was sort of an unruly child. And, and it'll make sense in a moment. And so it was more specifically in Israel. And so I was there, I was sent there because for whatever reason, uh, I was not doing well here in Manhattan. And so when I, one day, uh, my class went to a, a day trip to Jerusalem. And at the time, I despised that place uh, because I was, you know, I was from Manhattan. I was listening to heavy metal. I didn't give a, a crap about Jerusalem. I didn't get, I thought Jerusalem, the reason why I despised it because it was old and it had rocks and dust everywhere. <laughs> you know, I was not exactly the most uh, worldly child. And, but second, it was just a different environment it uh, was the epicenter jerusalem was the epicenter of everything that i held um, to be in contempt which was the western religions at the time at the time so here i am i'm on this trip and you know i'm you know i was born and raised in manhattan so i'm used to churches and mosques and synagogues you know it's it's nothing for me but my um, I guess the students uh, that were in my class there in Israel did not have that exposure. And this was in the eighties, and in Israel, there there are not a many. There were not many churches in Tel Aviv, so no one knew about it. So when we were in Jerusalem, when we would pass like churches and mosques, the kids would actually run. My my, I guess you could say my colleagues my my fellow students would be running because they felt in some way they would be tainted by it so but i was i sort of slowed down and i said well, let me just walk you know a little slower and and i was just looking at the artwork and the frescoes that were on these um these buildings and again remember i was like hardcore atheist metalhead you know, I didn't care about all, all those things. And then I looked up at one of these chapels and something came over me. And even right now, I, I, I get like, you know, goosebumps when I think about it. And, and it says, you will study this for the rest of your life. And I guess you could say the rest is history. Uh, from that moment on, I started studying everything, you know, the occult, the you know the bible i mean every every possible thing under the sun and so it has informed all my work to this to this point and you know i know a lot of people like to sort of specialize in one thing or the other uh, but i feel that spirituality the occult in general is so vast you know, and every single culture has an occult tradition, a magical tradition. I think as occultists, we are shortchanging ourselves if we like focus on one particular aspect. And that's why I write on the diversity 
of themes that I write. So I can write on Hindu mantras and Kabbalah because I feel that although they may not seem that exactly uh, correlated to one another, but they are traditions in the occult and in magic that we should all be embracing. At, even if you don't follow it, at least learn about it. And I think that that's part of the problem in the current occult world is that people are specializing. And the problem is, and that's fine if, if, if you want to specialize for your own good, but don't bad mouth, don't push away other traditions because they are just as valid. They're just not part of, let's say, the Western tradition that we're used to. And the benefit of my upbringing was that I was allowed, I had the luxury to experiment in all of these different traditions. So I think that is very important. And that's why I write, you'll see books from Kabbalah to Hindu mantras, and there's no inconsistency there. What I'm trying to say is that it's, all these traditions are for us to explore. Yes, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Uh, and, you know, I think as well, uh, for those of you that are watching too, that, and I'm sure everybody has heard this, has had any experience with the occult at all, is, you know, you, you'll see some people rise up and say, you know, oh, my tradition is better than your tradition. Or, what are you doing? You know, that's just, that is a real spiritual immaturity right there. Right. Um, because, you know, occult really just means secret or hidden. Right. And so if we're truly interested in seeking out that which is secret or hidden, it really doesn't matter what tradition it is, only that which is resonating with you. And, of course, that you have the self-discipline to work with it. Right. Uh, because, of course, you can't just be one of these willy-nilly people that just picks and chooses from everything that never never ever studies anything really right uh, there needs to be a commitment to yourself really and to a learning process but not a restriction a restriction where you think you know this tradition or that tradition is the only one that's going to work with me right and i completely agree with that um you know and i and what i've been uh, experiencing is i, I don't know if uh, I mean, many people who will probably be watching this know that I don't tend to get involved in any type of drama. I don't you know, really comment in groups unless there's like a very specific question. Um, but what I'm noticing, and to your point, is that there is a lot of factionalism in the occult yes. that really, I mean, I'll tell you, it, it actually... It hurts me in, 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 a, in a very direct way because the whole point, at least from what I see from people who are posting, that you know religion has done us wrong, you know the Abrahamic religions and all of that, but yet they're turning the occult into a religion. They're turning it into the same exact dogmatic religion and – if it, it, and I'll tell you this, they're actually more dag dogmatic than some of the religions. And <laughs> it's, it's amazing. I, you know, and, and so I try to, to be a mediating force there, but I think this is beyond any one person's control. And I, you know, I, I have to say, I, I concur with that. And I think I've even said some things to some folks. I used to have a different type of a, broadcast platform which had network partners from different backgrounds it was basically the same tradition but there were factions within it right and they would fight back and forth and i i, I told you know one person even today who, who used to listen to me when i was uh, doing that it used to be called northern Runes radio and i said you know i felt so much like a referee you know i was standing in the sandbox refereeing between folks that were arguing about their sandcastles and uh uh you know it just uh was something that was taking too much of my time so i shut her down and uh there's an attitude that's out there that i think is importing a lot of the dogmatism that they've been trying to get away from into occultism 
and uh, it doesn't work. It, it actually damages a person's progress and, and growth, if you even want to talk about it in those terms, because it's just putting you in the same paradigm. And right. it's, it's very sad to see that happen. But you can't, you know, force people because like, uh, you know, one person that taught me philosophy said, uh, you know, a person persuaded against their will is of the same persuasion still. Right. Uh, exactly. <laughs> you know, funny as that is, it's true. Yep. Uh, they have to come to that conclusion themselves. But yeah, I, I know I have no place for, for drama. And I, I used to boot people off my Facebook pages for making political comments. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. want to hear any of it. You know? Yeah, it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's just incredible. Um, you know, I, I obviously I'm not going to mention names, but, you know, there are factions in in our occult community that, you know, blacklists people, you know, uh, just because they don't agree with them. I'm one of them, and uh, there's a few others. Obviously, I can't mention names. I didn't get permission to mention names, so I won't. Um, and that's that's the whole thing. I mean, we this community has become so, um, I guess you could say, petty in some way. And I don't like it. I, there's no reason for it. You know, there's no reason for it. We're, 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 we're all in the same, I guess you could say, we're all in the same boat. You know, we're, we're looking to progress ourselves, to achieve certain things in our lives. Uh, and we realize that conventional uh, or Western religion is not serving us. But, the problem is, is that so many of these occultists are becoming, you know, religionists in themselves, and of course, then that blackmails me, uh, uh, not blackmail, but blacklists me, um, in the sense that then all of a sudden they're like, oh well, you know, he doesn't relate to us because he's not one of us, and because I have left hand path people, because I write books also on the left hand path and they're like well he's not really a left hand path and it's like well wait a minute yes i am but i'm also right hand path too it's it, it, it these definitions we got to get rid of them it's it's we have Absolutely. this exactly right you see you understand and, and and we got to put we're actually in the same boat and all these factions we're no better than the catholic church we're no better than you know, Hasidic Judaism, that we're all like, like fighting each other. There's no reason for it. No. There's no reason. And you know what? Uh, I challenge anybody to look back even a hundred years, let's be generous, mm -hmm. and see in occult teaching where right hand path and left hand path is ever mentioned. Right, exactly. You know, that's, that's a modern term of convenience because exactly. people want to label things there was only magic there was right. only the occult and whether or not a person was basically submitting themselves to something they considered to be a higher power or whether they were moving towards building their own uh, consciousness which ends up being the same thing in the end. Right. You know, but, but people get lost in the terminology and the semantics of it. And then uh, because I think as well of the 2000 years at least of heavy dogmatism that's been out there. Yeah. That, you know, they, it's just almost like an automatic programming in, in people's minds to start changing the terms, but putting the same model that they're used to onto it. Exactly. And yeah, it doesn't really help. I, I think it's a false dichotomy. Yeah. I, I like one other uh, magician that I know, uh, you know, said, and, and we agreed on this was that you know, dualism. When you take a look at it from the concept of it being all or nothing for either, let's say, positive or negative, mm -hmm. ends up just becoming restricted. Right. But polarity where you are looking in the Hegelian philosophy of how, mm -hmm. how both of these apparently opposite viewpoints are true at the same time. Right. Can come together in a synthesis and actually create change. 
Exactly. Yeah, you know, I, just to speak to that point, um, in, in my book, um, I, I have this concept, one of my books, I, I mentioned the difference between balance and harmony. And, it, and, and it's, it's going to, to uh, inform exactly what you said. A lot of people in the occult or in spirituality in general are always looking for uh, balance between good and evil and white and dark, you know, white and black. And, you know, everything is – now, if you look at a balanced scale, what do you see? You see nothing. You see static between left and right. It's static. But my philosophy is that harmony is what we need, is where you have sometimes the, the quote-unquote darker side is up and sometimes the lighter side is up. And that's, that's how our organs work. You know, it's, it's, everything is in harmony. It's not balance. You know, balance is an equal 50-50, whereas harmony allows for, you know, energies to flow from one extreme to another and in between. And so exactly what you were saying is that, you know, there, these, you know, black and white distinctions between these things, actually, it, these concepts don't, it, it's, it's not actually beneficial for us. It's, we, we need to look at the harmonization of the two. Um, and that's why, when people ask me, are you left hand or right hand path? I'm saying, actually, I'm neither. I'm, I'm both and, and none. <laughs> you know, well, I like the way you know it. Yeah. I actually have two hands. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. You know, and <clears throat> but the, the fact that people ask a question like that, what that tells me is that they're actually still in a religionist mindset. Mm -hmm. where there is this faction and that faction. And that, I think, for the occult community is, is very detrimental because if you see what's going on in the occult community, people are railing against the Western religions, the Abrahamic religions, but they're becoming the Abrahamic religions, but within, you know, within the context of the occult. And so... You know, it just drives me crazy. I, I, I don't know what to do. You know, uh, I keep on trying, but. I don't know. I like to answer and say, you know, we were always heretics. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> right. But, you know, uh, sometimes there's a lot of things that a person has to face, and I'm sure that you've had to face yes. it, too, where people just don't understand where your position is, and so they rail against you and, uh, right. you know, try to. You know, and it's not something that's going to dissuade you. It's not something that's going to harm you, but it is right. irritating when you try to see what's going on in truth and you have all these folks rising up, diluting the water, so to speak. Right. And, uh, I don't know. I, I don't have any time for controversy over foolish things either. Um, my focus, and I think yours is, is very similar, is simply to to get to the root of what we can work with in our lives, not right. what the definitions that people put on it. Right. And, uh, and realize that, you know, we'll never quantify the infinite, but we'll be able to do more with our lives, our consciousness, our focus and influence and help those who, you know, really want to do that too by, just continually being that um, unrestricted conduit uh, for self and for whatever you want to call it, the divine. Right. Light I or dark, that. doesn't matter all. Exactly. Um, which, which is quite fascinating, too. And, and I know that uh, you were talking about something that you were, you were preparing there, which kind of leads me uh, to this little question here is uh, – you know, without giving up too much information, as I know that, you know, authors are quite secretive about certain things. Uh, was there a new book that you're working on that's going to be getting released soon? Uh, yes. Actually, there's there are two texts right now 
in pre-release on Amazon right now. Um, and the reason why I pre-release them is actually it's, you know, to be on a more personal side, it's a brain hack. It keeps me focused. It keeps me moving. And Amazon is an unrelenting mistress. Let me tell you, when you, when you pre-release, they're like, you got to get this done or you're banned. <laughs> so <laughs> it helps me just sort of focus my energy. So the, uh, there are two texts right now. Uh, one is called, Melchizedek on mask. It's about uh, Melchizedek. Uh, in Hebrew, it's Melchizedek, and I, you know, he's a character that is uh, fairly mysterious uh, in the occult and in the sort of the the broader New Age field. Um, I don't really cover a lot of New Age concepts with him, but I get into detail about what the ancient texts say that he is not channeled wisdom. I mean, I'm not taking away from channeled wisdom, but since I cannot confirm the channeled wisdom, I look at the ancient texts in the Aramaic and the Hebrew and the Greek, and I present that in the book. Um, and then I present also a few uh, meditations as well. And the second, uh, title is Devils, Demons, and Ghosts in the Hebrew Tradition, Romancing the Sitra Ahra. And that's a, a very big title there. But what my purpose in that book is, is to present demonology from the Hebrew perspective, but from the original texts, because we have a lot of texts out there about Sitra, Ahran, Samael, and all of these things. And But the problem is, is that they're using English translations and creating new English <laughs> interpretations. So I'm going to be presenting the Hebrew, the Aramaic of these texts. And some of these texts have not been translated in English yet. So... I'm going to present them in that book, um, taking it to a different level. It may not be as romantic as some of the other texts where they use very poetic language. I'm not going to use poetic language. I am an academic also, so I'm going to use sort of academic language. But at the same time, I'm going to present meditations and rituals to these uh, entities that are written there and no one has that because no one can actually read the source text at least as far as i know and so i'm going to bring it all to light um, in aramaic and in hebrew and like i said texts that have never been translated at least not yet into english so i'm really looking forward to that and i hope uh, that will help people and also it will help dispel a lot of the um, how can I, I don't want to use the term mythology but I guess I could uh, mythology around some of these figures you know some people look at Samael and they say it's the he's this and this and that but and you look in the source text he may not be all this this and that <laughs> you know and so that's that's I think is my job in this world is to go into the source texts and and that book i really believe is going to do that that sounds awesome uh i'm definitely going to be uh checking those out myself because of course I'm, I'm always interested in something that's going into the source text because that means i don't have to do it <laughs> <laughs> exactly i'll tell you when i was going through different things in the northern tradition i you know a lot of the books that have been written by some some good authors that are out there weren't in existence at the time right and so you know you're sitting there oh, really that's what english sounded like a thousand years <laughs> I thought it was like the King James Bible. Oh, no, not oh, even close. Yeah, you were sitting there, you know. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, that's not even English. And you learn a lot. Which we have, yeah. I have great respect for, for folks that will go through that. I, I know I've been going through as well some things in uh, Middle Eastern history. is focusing more on the Persian, uh, which is very interesting. Persian, and then just starting into the Chaldean, 
And I think there's a lot of cross reference between some of those cultures as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but I find and it I can... very interesting that there are some, yeah. some uh, prototypes of the Northern European gods that you know go back down into the Vedas. Right. And you find some of them popping up in uh, Persia. <laughs> some of them right. No, exactly. Up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And to your point, it's like, so like Mithra, right? I mean, we have Mithra, and then all of a sudden he shows up in Zoroastrian religion as Mithras, right? Yeah. So, yeah, no, it, it, it's exactly true. I mean, there's this, this, uh, um, I, I, I don't know if, if we can use the terms, um, uh, well, they mix, they mix in some way, and there's no denying it. Uh, the Persian religion especially, and this is also something, I, I happen to, to specialize in the Middle East in general and, the, and a little bit of the Far East as well, and it's, it's just amazing what's happening. Uh, the Persian religion, uh, just to speak to your point, there's a lot going on there. And you're you're right to mention it because a lot of people don't uh, cover it. I will eventually cover it myself, but it's it's coming down the pike. But you are c completely right. I mean, there is a lot of mystery there, and there's a lot that we can learn from that. It's it's fascinating, and you know the interconnectedness right. that's there, and uh, you know yes, there's many things that are unique. But I like to, to put it this way, you know, if you took a look at one of those multifaceted diamonds, each one of those faces is individual, but it's still one diamond. Right. And uh, it all may, all those facets may catch the light just a little bit differently. That's one of the beauties of it, but it's still right. all one diamond. And so, you know, we understand the paradox, well, at least we, we understand as much as we can of it, of how... There's a multiplicity of things, including ourselves, and yet we are all from one source somehow exactly. in ways that we can't explain. And, uh, you know, that interconnectedness is important to remember, I believe. Um, have you found with the books that you've written that uh, is there any one that you think is, is probably your favorite or the most important one? You know, it's it's a good question, uh, and before I even answer that, I, I do want to just say one thing, is that I do agree with you that in the end, we are part of one experience, you know, and the fact that we have all these factions that are fighting each other, um, you know, is, is very painful, but really in the end, we are trying to experience the same thing in a different form. Uh, but it is like you said, a diamond, different, fa it's the same diamond, but different sides, you know, mm -hmm. but to answer your question, I guess to say, what would be the most important, you know, it's, it's hard because every single text I have, uh, is important to various degrees. But I, I, if I had to choose, I would say that the text that I wrote on, um, the Canaanite and Mesopotamian uh, deities and gods are probably the most important, and the, and that is on Baal, on Asherah, and Lilith, Tiamat, and uh, Pazuzu. And the reason why I mention that is because they are most um, most misunderstood. Uh, because of various cultural issues, for example, uh, in the Western culture, anything that is counter to Jesus or to Yahweh are considered demons. So then you would have Baal and Asherah would be demons as well. Uh, mm -hmm. You would have uh, Pazuzu and Tiamat and Lilith are, are also demons in the Western tradition. Uh, well, Lilith more specifically but they're all demons in the Western tradition because it's counter to their dogma. So anything that's counter to their dogma is demonic. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is that inf that infects uh, Western understanding. And I will say this, and this is going to be very controversial, 
because I know a lot of cultists may not agree with this, but another thing that does not help the Mesopotamian gods uh, or the perspective of what they are is the Necronomicon. And the Necronomicon is something that I was really enamored with when I was a, a young. I was like, oh, my God, by Simon, oh, the, you know, this is awesome, you know, this is a dark thing. But in the end, it turned out to be actually a work of fiction from H.P. Lovecraft. But the Necronomicon, what it did was it, it created a shroud of darkness around Mesopotamian deities. I mean, even Pazuzu is shown, is there. <laughs> and so all of these entities are shrouded in darkness. They're, they're minions of, of hell. And that if you use, you know, the rituals and the Necronomicon, you're going to open up the, the gates of hell and all, and all these deities, you know, all these spirits are going to come out. And the problem is, is that that does Mesopotamian, uh, magic a disservice because it's actually not like that it's just because it's not as known doesn't mean it's evil <laughs> you no, know what i mean true. yeah and so i think that the uh, you know and i've said this in the books on every single one of the uh, every book that i've written on on mesopotamian magic is that we are caught up in this i in this Western identity, even if we don't realize that we are, but we are, um, you know, that's why some people email me and say, Oh, isn't Baal a demon? I was like, well, not according to the Canaanites. He wasn't <laughs> according to the Jews and the Christians. He was so, but that, that, but that's the whole thing. A question like that already tells me someone is looking from a biblical perspective and that's, why I write on these various topics to sort of break that, to be like, look, yes, the Bible does say that. It does say all these things. But the thing is that we have to look beyond the Bible too. You know, these things existed before the Bible. Yes, and indeed. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, so my books on Canaanite magic and Mesopotamian magic are the most important because they are the ones that break or uh, attempt to break that relig the Western religious conception of them. So that was a long-winded way of saying that, but those are important the most important. Important to be said, though. Important yeah. to be said. No, thank you. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Now, uh, one of the things that I, I always do when I'm talking to folks, because there's always a synergy that happens in a conversation, Right. especially between occultists. <laughs> it just seems to happen. And I was wondering if there was something that was on your heart that just has arisen as we've been talking here, whether it's related to any of the questions that we've been dealing with or not, doesn't matter. Anything that you really feel that you need to communicate to the folks that are out here today. Uh, if, you, if you have that sense, go for it. Well, I, I think it, it, it relates to everything that we've just been uh, talking about, about this, this disunity in the occult community. It, it, it causes me so much uh, angst, uh, even though I don't necessarily have anything to do with some of these um, uh, you know, debates. It just it hurts me to see that people are sort of are so egotistical and 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 I'm using that term I'm not using it lightly, but people where they're saying I am this, um, you are this, and I am superior to you, and therefore you have to believe in in what I am saying, and I never state that in my own books. Um, I'm like, look, my books are. A are, are one map in this whole territory. You can take it, you like it, use it, but never do I say that I'm the ultimate, you know, uh, of, of the occult. But there are people who do. Mm -hmm. And that causes this division 
in the community and it just it's horrible you know i uh, just the other day and i'm not going to mention names uh but i was put on a blacklist okay and a bunch of other people were too it's it's just not about me but really because i just disagreed with the way that they presented their uh their work i didn't i didn't i didn't even say anything i i i just i just agreed with someone else and i was already blacklisted I, they don't even know me these people you know <laughs> oh, and yeah so the but because what they're doing is that they're they're saying that you know demons are communicating through facebook and whatever and i don't know if that's true or not i mean you know i i i'm not part of their group but at the same time if no one agrees with them then obviously they blacklist and so i got like a ton of emails uh sorry sorry about that um a ton of emails people telling me oh you know you were blacklisted and i was like listen i don't even know these people and the thing is is that why that is is because there is this if you are not with me you're against me mm -hmm. and that is something that i wish we would break in the occult uh there is no reason uh, for Satanists and Luciferians and white magicians and whatever you have to be, you know, fighting each other. I mean, again, we're escaping the Abrahamic religions to get away from that. Why are we becoming that? And that really drives me crazy. And so for me, I'm trying to tell people is just you know get rid of that that's this this factionalism is going to kill you it's going to it's going to it's going to rot your your brain and it's going to rot your your relationships because listen i have people in my life that are quote unquote light workers that they, they never do any black magic or anything like that and yet i i i get along with them just fine I can light a candle to Pazuzu and do a black magic ritual, and you know what? There's no problem because it's it's unified. Like you said, we're all part of the same diamond. We're a part of the same diamond. So for me, what I'm, I guess the the moral is is that we need to unify and stop, you know, fighting each other. It's ridiculous. We're, we the whole point we were to escape that, and now we find ourselves more divided than ever. And I, and I hate that. I hate that. And I wish we wouldn't do that. There's no reason for it. No, I, I can certainly attest to the, to the importance of that message. And, uh, you know, folks, you watching here, uh, you know, it, it, before you get involved in any type of drama, ask yourself a question in all sincerity, you know, is it really worth your time? All right. Does it really change what you do you know if it doesn't why bother engaging it exactly and just you know because if, if we were all the same and we all agreed there wouldn't be facets on the diamond it would be a smooth globy stone right but there would only be one <laughs> there would be one expression of it right and that would be boring as all get up mm -hmm. you know that's conformity that's what we've all tried to our best to distance ourselves from right right you know and so one of the things that i do like about you know some of the folks that i have worked with is that you know they do not believe in coercion they do not believe that it is their place to coerce another person and these are black magicians, folks. <laughs> they don't believe oh, that it's great. their place to coerce another person to do something that is against their will. Right. Because it's totally against what they stand for. And you know what? I can respect that. And, you know, you need to come to whatever choices on your own through getting the information that's valuable to you. And doing it in such a way where you realize that if somebody else makes a different decision, it's not a threat to you. Right. Now, if somebody was out trying to harm you, well, that's a different story. Somebody's right. trying to actually stop you from growing, that's a different story. Somebody's just being different, who cares? 
Exactly. Let people be their own expression. Exactly. And that also helps to preserve you to be your own expression. Exactly. I mean, yeah, you, 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 what you just said there is exactly what we need. I mean, you, you need to put that out there more as well as to bring, bring that message out uh, because that's what we need. We, we, we can't be this disunified. We can't be this angry at one another. You know, it just, it just defeats the whole purpose of what we're, we're here for. Mm-hmm. You know, and and you know, it's it's just it's amazing. You said it so much more eloquently than I could. This is exactly what we need, and 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 everyone who's watching this and listening to this, listen to him. <laughs> you said exactly what we need. You said it. Well, I I hope that this is you know from both what what you've said and what I've said here is something that resonates with the hearts of people that are watching or listening. I hope so. And hope so. Uh, and that we can grow. I want to thank you very much for taking the time to be here on the damn podcast, uh, Bao. Uh, no, thank you. We really appreciate the fact that you did that. And, uh, you know, uh, we're going to have links in the description below of this video if you're on YouTube and on our social media platforms, uh, if you happen to be watching it from there, that, uh, you know, will direct you to uh, the author, Bal Kadman on Amazon, and uh, any other links that, you know, after this uh, recording is complete that uh, Bal wants to share. And, uh, you know, take a look at the titles that are there and have an open mind, as with any occult author, have an open mind when you read the books and the texts and realize, especially if there is a lot of work that goes into the original manuscripts from which things have uh, been derived, uh, put into it, that there could be a awful lot of value for you, even if it's something different than what you've been taught. Because sometimes what we've been taught came from something that was an interpretation of something that wasn't even from the actual texts right that that these things arose from and it's not that that's wrong it's just that it's not from that source right? right and that is something that when you open yourself to that can increase the connection that you have to the actual force that that god or demon or angel or whatever you want to entitle it represents and that is something that can help you in your growth evolution exactly thank you very much for watching and of course our main broadcasts go on the third sunday of every month and of course monday or pardon me tuesday and wednesdays we have a facebook group question talk and a rant of the week that's released on the youtube channel as well until next time folks